Okay, guys, thank you. It's your question 4.1. Here we go. Very few people got this one right. Okay. 1, Y, and B are the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence. And 1XB are the first, 1X and B are the first three terms of a geometric sequence. Prove that this is true. Okay. Now guys, whenever they ask you to prove something, to get to something, you cannot use this yet. This is your target. You want to get here. This is your aim. Okay. We start by what we have. Okay. What do we have? What do we know? Okay, so 1YB is the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence. What does that mean? When is something an arithmetic sequence? Common difference. In other words, what do I know? Sorry, just before we go on, you see what this is. This is an equation. Which means that's what I'm trying to find, it's equations. Okay. So first, I need to go and use the fact that this is an arithmetic sequence, which means it's got common difference, which means that T2 minus T1 must be equal to T3 minus T2. It's a common difference. Now, T2 in our example is Y. Minus T1 is 1 is equal to and t3 here is b minus t2 is y okay, there's one equation now you'll notice what do these two sequences have in common the b the b in other words i'm going to get another equation out of this one and then I'm going to use this one's B and replace it into this one's B. You see that? So, I'm going to solve for B. I'm going to get B on his own here. Okay? So, B is equal to, just take the 1 to the other side, becomes 2Y minus 1. Oh, I seem to be getting closer. 2Y, if that plus 1 goes to the other side, it's minus 1. Okay? Cool. So now let's use the second part of the of the question where they say this is a geometric sequence. What do I use when I have a geometric sequence? Common ratio. Common ratio, which means term two divided by term one will be the same as when I take term three divided by term two. Okay. If you forget those formulas, they're not really formulas, they're just the idea that if I take this divided by that, I get the same answer as when I take this and I divide it by that. When I take consecutive numbers and I divide it into each other, I get the same number. So, T2 this time is X, T1 is 1, must give me the same answer when I take T3, which is B, and I divide with T2, which is B. X. Okay, now it's a matter of simplifying. Solving for B. How can I solve for B? How do I simplify an equation with a denominator? Cross multiply. I don't like that word. I just multiply everywhere with the denominators. So I multiply with an X and I multiply with a 1. Okay, on both sides with a 1 and with an X. And then I see on this side it cancels, on that side it cancels, so I get x squared is equal to b. Oh, but b was equal to something else. b was equal to 2y minus 1. So, next I know that x squared is actually equal to 2y minus 1, because that was uh, what b is equal to. According to this, that is what B is equal to. 
Now they just want a little bit different. They want it to be 2y is equal to x squared plus 1, which means they just want this negative 1 on the other side. So I get rid of it with a plus 1 on both sides. So on this side I've got 2y, let's just write it on the left. 2y is equal to x squared plus 1. Which step? No, you learned that you take the negative one to the other side becomes a plus one, isn't it? Okay, it's not taking numbers nowhere. Okay, it's not a child's hand you can take to the other side. Okay, actually, what you're doing is you're adding a one on this side to get rid of the negative one, but what you do on the one side, you must do on the other side. So it looks like these two become zero. So it just looks like this one went to become a positive on the other side. It just looks like that. Okay, but actually what I did, I added a one on both sides. You get it? Okay? Just added a one on both sides and I swapped the sides immediately.